What's up, Odooers, and welcome back. Today we're talking about the split and merge functions in Odoo's manufacturing app. The split function allows me to split a single MO into multiple MOs for smaller quantities. On the other hand, the merge function allows me to merge multiple MOs of the same product into a single MO. So let's jump into the Odoo database to see how this works. All right, here we are on the manufacturing app. First, let's focus on splitting a single MO into multiple smaller MOs. To do so, I'm going to start by creating a new MO, which I'll do by clicking on Operations, then Manufacturing Orders, and New. Then in the Product field, I'm going to select our Table Product, and we're going to create a quantity of 12 and enter 12 in the Quantity field. Then all we have to do is click Confirm. And now let's say we've decided that we want to produce these 12 tables using more than just one MO. To split the current MO, I'm going to start by clicking the gear icon at the top of the screen and then selecting the split option. Here I can decide how many smaller MOs the main MO should be split into, along with the quantity of the product produced in each MO. In the split number field, I'll enter how many MOs the main MO should be split into. By default, a quantity of two is entered, but let's change this to a quantity of three instead. After doing so, a line appears for each manufacturing order that will be created showing the scheduled date, the employee responsible, and the quantity to produce. Each of these fields are automatically set, but we can change them if we need to. So for the first line, the MO is scheduled to be carried out today by me to produce a quantity of four units. That looks good, so we're going to leave that as is. However, for the second line, the first two fields look good but I only want to manufacture a quantity of two for this MO. So in the quantity to produce field, we're going to change this from four to two. Once I do, a warning appears telling us the total in the quantity to produce column must match the number displayed in the quantity to produce field displayed at the top of the pop-up window. This ensures we don't overlook any quantities while splitting orders due to miscalculations. To fix that, we'll add two units to the third line and change this from four to six. All right, for the final line, I want to change the date of when the MO is scheduled, since I won't have time to complete it today. I can do so by double-clicking on the scheduled date, which will open a calendar popover. And from here, I'm just going to select tomorrow's date and click Apply. Now, I won't be at work tomorrow, so I'm going to change the responsible person by clicking on the field, and a drop-down will appear. And here, I'm going to select Jose. All right, all of this looks good, so let's go ahead and click the split button at the bottom of the window to split this MO. Once I do, we're automatically taken to the first page of the three MOs. I can tell this is the first MO reference number at the top of the page is because we have the old MO number with a 001 following. If I want to see all of the split MOs off the old MO, I can click on the back order smart button, and we're taken to a page that displays all three each with a three-digit tag added to the end of the reference numbers to help tell them apart. All right, now that you've seen how to split MOs, let's take a look how to merge two or more MOs together. I can do this from the back orders page, but the most common way to do this is by navigating back to operations and then manufacturing orders. Now, I can merge as many MOs as I want, but they all have to be for the same product. For example, I can't merge an MO for a table with another MO for a chair. So let's say I want to merge two of the MOs I just split. To do so, I'll tick the checkboxes for the 001 and 002 MOs. Then I'll click Actions at the top of the page. And then here, all I have to do is click Merge from the drop-down menu. Once I do, I'm automatically taken to the page for the merged MO. This MO is given the first available reference number. The schedule date for the merge MO is automatically set to the earliest date on which the MO can be processed, regardless of the scheduled dates of the MOs that were merged to create it. Now, if we navigate back to operations and then back to manufacturing orders, we can see the MO listed on the page with the reference numbers of the MOs merged to create it listed in the source column. And that, Odoers, brings us to the end of another great tutorial. You now know how to split a single MO into multiple smaller MOs and how to merge a multiple MO into a single MO. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you next time.